What's up everybody? Jack here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a list of five rules that make you happier and more effective. Okay? I'm going to give you an example, and you'll be able to download this spreadsheet completely for free by looking at the description of this video. So what's going on here? What is this spreadsheet? It's five things that I know about myself. There's things that I do that make me unhappy. There's things that I don't do that make me unhappy. And whether I realize it or not, a deep part of me always remembers if I'm doing these things or if I'm not, even though in the moment I don't think that. I think it's going to help you guys understand and be able to create your own if I share what my rules are because this will help you guys figure out the context and I'll work with you to figure out what your rules should be or at least give you some ideas to help you figure this out. When you get this, you're going to click on file and make a copy. And then you're gonna change this part here to your name. So let's say your name is Bob. It's gonna be Bob's rules. Because your rules to be happy and effective and get more work done are different than my rules, okay? Everything has to be done to your own individual personality, okay? So these are my five things that I must do every day, otherwise I will feel unhappy. The first one is I cannot have any caffeine from tea or coffee without eating food first. Throughout my life, I have often struggled with fatigue, and currently and recently, it is not a big problem in my life. However, I have always had problems with hunger and my appetite. There are many periods in my life where I go days and I am just eating 500 or 1,000 calories a day, and this is not healthy, especially when I want a life with more energy. I must eat more. It's very, very important for me. And it's something that I'm not very good at. And often what I do is I'll wake up and I'll start drinking tea or coffee and these things suppress my appetite. So I cannot do this. I must only have caffeine if I have food first. And the idea here is that I'm not always going to be hungry. I cannot rely on being hungry to eat. I must find ways to trick myself into eating because I don't feel hunger as often as people around me seem to. So I do like coffee and I love tea. So if I make myself a rule where I cannot have these things unless I eat first, this is very good for me. And also, it makes the caffeine more effective. You don't get as jittery if your body actually has food and real energy, then the caffeine consumed afterwards can help wake you up in a more meaningful way instead of just crashing. And I think this is something that I am very aware of. So that is why this is my first rule. My second rule is kind of related to the biggest problems of my life historically that I've communicated, my failure to eat enough food, right, is to eat food within one hour of waking up. So no matter what it is, even if it's a donut, uh, like I need to consume food in the first part of the day. Because if I don't do that, my body goes into this mode where it's like, oh, okay, no food forever, whatever. We're not worried about it until you crash, have a headache, and feel super crappy like 24 hours from now. So that I understand myself very well, and I know that I am better off forcing myself to have some kind of food in the beginning of each day. Um, so this is actually the first one I failed because today I didn't do that. I had a great meal and I didn't have coffee. So I, I f succeeded with the no coffee without food, but I failed to eat food within one hour of waking up and I ate food an hour and a half after waking up. So that's not ideal. Prioritizing is important. This isn't gonna be perfect, but hey, it's okay. The third thing is to have an alarm that goes off on 6 o'clock on Monday and Friday and at 8 a.m. on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. This is just because of my life 
cycle, my schedule, I don't need to wake up at a certain time most of the time because I can do my work whenever I choose to. I can choose to book a coal or choose to move around coals at different times, right? But this flexibility is amazing, but it's really important that I structure it more. Um, I feel happier when I'm doing a little bit more work and when I'm getting a little bit more of these kind of things done and I'm aware of that. So it's not like doing this stuff is hard because the reality is that when I follow these rules, I feel like I am being the person that I want to be instead of just being frustrated that I'm not the person that I want to be. And that's an important distinction, okay? So the next one is no cannabis until I've been awake for three hours. Um, and personally, I understand that uh, my cannabis usage is something that contributes to my fatigue. However, I also understand that I've been through a lot of traumas and crazy things in my life. And I have this relentless positivity. And part of that is because of cannabis usage. It has really helped me just, just not feel scared and just feel like I want to eat something or watch something funny or laugh. And that has been so useful in instilling this relentless positivity despite losing my father as a child and going through sickness and uh, problems with my own personal health as a teenager. Um, so it's a balance. I don't want to be like those people who are just stoned all the time. But I also understand that uh, it just... Cannabis just kind of makes everything a little bit more interesting. It with if it is used in balance, it's something that I really love and I enjoy and I love doing with other people. And it's not something I want to remove from my life uh, because it is true that I have a bit more trouble focusing if I'm if I'm stoned or I've been consuming cannabis, right? But it's also true that like seventy percent of my YouTube channel, all the videos that changed my life were just things that I did because I got super stoned and I was like, I'm gonna do something crazy and not think too much about it, woo! And like that changed my life. So I can't, I can't just, I can't, I can't take full responsibility for that because honestly, a lot of the videos I made in the past were absolutely ridiculously risky and insane and crazy. And I probably wouldn't have had the courage to do them if I wasn't a bit stoned out of my mind sometimes. But doing that pushed me out of my comfort zone and put me in a situation where the videos are great. And they've changed my life in a permanent, meaningful way, you know? So that's why it's the fourth rule. I want to find more balance. I don't want to be a person who wakes up and smokes because then I don't enjoy it. I don't even like it. I like having that balance. Um, and really, like, I don't want to be smoking the, in, within the first three hours of every single day. But I would like to be a person who, as a general rule of thumb, never smokes until they've been awake for about three hours. Cause that's easy to do even if i'm like not feeling it right like i can be like okay i just gotta i woke up at eight i just i just gotta make it till 11 o'clock totally doable right and then the fifth one is no hitting cigarettes so i don't actually like purchase or smoke whole cigarettes i haven't done that really like at any point in my life however i do have a lot of friends who smoke cigarettes and i'm often like seeing them smoke and wanting to share in their experience and i'll like take a hit or two of their cigarette um and i always feel shitty after doing this it never gives me anything worth it i feel like i need to brush my teeth i don't like it and i feel like i am doing something that's making my i'm aware that i'm doing something that's bad for me without good reason and that is just dumb, and it makes me resent myself. So that's why it's one of these uh, one of these rules that I just need to follow blindly every day moving forward. Okay? So these are my five things. No coffee or tea without food first. I have to eat food within one hour of waking up. I have an alarm for 6 a.m. on Monday and Friday, and 8 a.m. on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I don't consume any cannabis until I've been awake for three hours and I don't hit other friends' cigarettes anymore. These are my five things that I must do, and if I do not do them, I cannot complain about how I feel. I cannot be like, oh, I'm feeling depressed. No, I'm not doing the things that make me happy, so therefore, I am not feeling happy. That is my reality, okay? And you can do these things too. So. I'm hoping that by me sharing these goals with you, you've been inspired to think about maybe you also 
would benefit from having a few of these rules or modifying one of these rules. There is one thing I would like to say, and that is that uh, like cleanliness and m being able to maintain your environment is one of the most important things. And like I'm m focusing on these because I already had a week where I focused on cleaning more each day to try and get some experience with that, and that was it. And I also already had a week where I was skating and getting more exercise each day. I like conceptualize that when I am doing these things, I will feel better, I will feel happier. It just isn't immediate, it's not instant. And every day, there's gonna be a part of it that's harder. There's gonna be a part where you don't feel like the things you're doing matter. And you can't let that become what your whole day is like. It's just a part of your day. It's a part of being human. You can't just feel great all the time, even if you're doing everything right. But if you're doing all the things that make you the best person you can be, you are going to feel pretty good most of the time. And you're going to be able to identify what makes you feel fulfilled and what makes you feel happy. All right? So these five things are my rules that I know I must do. But then there's more stuff, and these I'm referring to as uh, stretch, right? These are things that I can stretch myself and do, and it's really good if I do them, but I shouldn't feel guilty if I don't. I shouldn't beat myself up if I don't. As long as I'm doing the first five, the really high-priority, important ones, everything else is extra, okay? But there are extra things that I have determined are really important and also make me feel like I am happier, okay? And these five things are, number one, to work on the Spanish content website. This is the biggest opportunity in my life. It is a point for me to shine educating and creating a product that is one of the things I have been put in a very unique position to create. I am one of a very few amount of people who has an information of this nature and also understands a whole community of other people that can benefit from this information. And I want to be able to provide this to people. And I feel confident that this is meaningful. I can make a difference in people's lives by bringing the information that they need to earn money online closer to them by making it so that they know it's possible, even if they've never even looked into it, because I've forced them to listen to me for five seconds in a YouTube ad hundreds of times. I'm very confident that this is the most meaningful thing I can do with what I currently know and making a product while also not relying on another platform like I've historically done in the past. The next thing is to be more useful to Sweet. Sweet is uh, the my biggest consulting client, and I they're a big opportunity for me. I really love working with them. One of the reasons that I love that work so much is because I'm part of a team of people. And if I've learned anything in this life about humans, it's that it doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter how smart you are. None of that matters. The only thing that really matters is your ability to coordinate and communicate with other people because a team of dumb people can get more done than one genius if they have good teamwork and they work together. You can never compete with a good team as an individual. This is the reality of humans. And if you think that's not true, it means that you haven't met the right people to show you this bond of teamwork. Humans are always stronger and more effective when they are working together. This is the reality. So if you are only working in things that are you and just you alone, there's only so far you can go. And that's why for me, a lot of my work has felt kind of alone in that way and that I'm working with other people, but I'm doing the work alone and then making a product that other people are working with, right? This is a limitation because it is not work with other people to create that product. So well, that's why I really enjoy working with Sweet uh, because we're a team of people trying to accomplish a specific goal. And I want to be more useful to them. That is something that I care about, okay? The next stretch thing is to skateboard for 10 minutes each day. Uh, this is both a mental health thing and also a physical health thing. 
I am really good about walking and getting a lot of steps and moving and that kind of thing, but I'm not very good about actually getting exercise and cardio. Um, skating is basically the only way that I get exercise and actually enjoy the process. So it's something that I feel better if I'm just skating a little bit each day. And mentally, skating is amazing because it shows you what happens when you just, you can try the same thing every day for five minutes and you literally just watch yourself get better. Even though you think, oh, five minutes, what's that gonna do? It doesn't matter. If you actually are touching it daily, and you're practicing every day, even if it's only for a few minutes, you can watch yourself get better. And there's so many times that seeing how I'm able to do something one day skating and not another day shows me the mental state that I'm currently in. It's a great indicator. So it both has a lot of mental health benefits and also physical health benefits. The other thing is to sweep and mop each day. Um, this is a great example of preventative maintenance. Basically, my understanding about life now is that if you're able to maintain your environment without feeling anger at the people around you, that means you can do anything. That is essentially the mentality that's necessary to succeed in your job, in your relationships, in everything else. Maintenance and understanding that you cannot fix all problems, or that you cannot prevent all problems, but you can create systems that predict those problems and give a convenient, easy solution. This is reality. This is the mentality that you must have in this life. If you want to live a good life and be happy and be a positive, successful individual who's well-connected, you have to view everything in the world as a problem that has a solution. No matter what your job is, no matter where you are, Everything has a solution. You should not let the thought that a solution is not there exist. As far as you're concerned, you should always assume there is an answer to the problem. You just don't know what it is. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And a great example of this common fallacy, this common mistake we all make, is uh, as a YouTuber, I do this all the time. I'll be like, oh yeah, I watched all those videos. Let me tell you something. If someone ever tells you they watched all the videos about a certain subject on YouTube, they are almost always lying. <laughs> there are so many videos on YouTube that even in individual niches, if you were to watch two videos each day, you would never run out of videos until you die, let alone on the entirety of YouTube. And I'm not saying this applies to every subject, but it's a common example of a fallacy, a mistake that we make as humans, where we think because we saw something two or three times, we exposed ourselves to all of it. And another great example of this is if you go to a country and people ask you, what are the people like there? Let's imagine you met a thousand people in your visit, right? These countries have millions of people. So if you met a thousand people out of 10 million, that's like meeting a person's toe and then looking at that person in a group of a hundred and saying you know who they are. You don't, unless you've exposed yourself to all of those people. And this is our common mistake. We are not exposing ourselves to enough information. We are just creating an opinion, wanting to be different than people and have our opinion, and looking at the world in a way that validates the opinion we have. But this is not the good way to live. The best way is to expose yourself to as much information as possible over and over and over and over again, okay? Moving on, next stretch goal is to cook one meal that requires cutting. Uh, this is just because I really like cooking, but I often get in these like moods where I think it's just work and I don't want to do it. But it actually is great and I enjoy it when I go do it, but I needed to define cooking a little bit because like I make like eggs and toast, but I don't think of that as cooking a meal. Does that make sense? So that's why I added that requires cutting part. So, all right guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. This kind of stuff is really important, right? Because I know that these things will make me produce amazing products and do great things if I follow these rules. It took me a long time to get to know myself well enough to understand why I was feeling unhappy. 
why I do feel unhappy when I feel unhappy. I used to believe it was just this random world and sometimes you just have bad days and it's not for any reason, but that isn't true. At least in my life, every time I feel emotional, it's because of multiple reasons, okay? So it's probably true in your life as well. So I really encourage you, change this to your name, modify these five rules to five rules about yourself. Also, don't worry if you can't think of these straight away. It might take you a couple days to really reflect on your actions and to think, what are these things I need to do, okay? But you can do it. And then the reason we have this chart is because we have to track it. You need to make yourself accountable. And in my case, that's one of the reasons I'm making this video. I feel very confident that I'm going to do these things and establish a baseline foundation of rules that I follow to get through every single day. However, being confident alone isn't enough. I need to force myself in as many ways as possible. I need to hold myself accountable by adding a social factor to this, right? So that's why I'm making this video. I'm showing you, I'm exposing these weaknesses. I'm openly talking to you about the things that I don't do that I want to do. Okay? Now you got to figure out what your things are. And again, just look in the description of this video, get a copy of this, and then just change the name to your own, and then track it. Every day that you do one of the things, you got to fill in a, this box. You could also print something like this and just tick it off manually if you need to have it in person. That's fine. Uh, for me, I add bookmarks of everything I need to do. And then once I finish whatever I needed to do with the bookmark, I get rid of it. That way, every time I'm using the internet browser, I know I need to think of this document. Uh, I need to look more into getting this camera plug in so that I can use my iPhone as a webcam so that I can make cooler videos. And also in World of Warcraft, I need to do this challenge. Um, and that's just something else that I don't want to forget about. Okay, so I bookmark it. So I'm going to be using looking at this regularly and I'm not worried. I know that I will actually look at it because it's one of the few things here. I don't have a ton of bookmarks that are making all the bookmarks irrelevant, right? That being said, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, if you like my teaching style, I do offer consultations and the first one is now completely free and it is also not recorded. Whoever you are listening to this, no matter where you are in the world, you can go to my Calendly page and book a call with me for free and tell me what you want it to be. If you want to just have me be super positive at you, I'll do it. If you want to learn about something, I'll do it. If you want to vent about something, I'll listen but you have to tell me why you're booking the call, okay? And that first call is free. After that, you either have to pay $20 for a 30-minute call, or you have to let me record the call and publish it on YouTube. These are your two options for a secondary call, okay? And also, you can check out my courses and that kind of stuff. But now, I'm trying to push this consulting thing, so if anyone you know wants to talk about this kind of stuff, I'm here. And I got tons of these Google Sheet things I'm making for people and helping myself learn to be more accountable and improve my life. And I'll do it for you too. I, I want to tell you that you have the problems that you have because you don't have access to the right information. But I've learned that that's not actually true. The reality is all humans, every single one of us, has the ability to fix all of our problems and move into a different kind of life. The internet has enabled that. The problem is the mentality. If you don't believe you can change, if you don't believe you can live a life where you're working less, earning more, and happier, and spending time with the people you love, then you're not going to do it. Why would you do something that you don't believe is possible? But the reality, it is. And that's my role. My role is to show you the way that I see the world. Because I can see that we're all surrounded by opportunity and we're all blind to the fact that a hundred years ago, none of this was possible. Most of us were dying, the disease, and all sorts of crazy things. We'd never, ever get a chance to get to the point we are now. Yet here we are, alive, 
surrounded by information and opportunity. Don't forget that. Best of luck, okay? Ciao!